What's up, everybody? This is Presto. Corporal Massage. And you are listening to 67, episode 67 of the Nintendads podcast, The Splatoon Review. Get inked. <laughs> um, yeah, Splatoon 3 has been out for two weeks. Somehow. It's been out for two whole weeks already, which is crazy to me. Um, and now it's review time, baby. We've had some time hands-on with the game, and we're going to let you know praises, criticisms. Overall, I would give this game a score of fresh. Fresh. <laughs> fresh. Stay fresh. Uh, I will also say I absolutely prefer every other idol group, like the singers, the Squid Sisters. Oh, yeah. Off the hook. All of them I prefer to uh, to uh, Deep Cut, which is the current lineup, yeah, sadly. I'm, not... I'm sorry, Deep Cut fans, but they don't make the cut. For those of you who don't understand... This is the most important part of the review. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to lose, like, half of our audience immediately right for this. There. Yeah, we're, we're, getting, we're getting it out <laughs> in the very beginning. But each iteration of the Splatoon series has a, a singer group or news group or whatever. The, I, people have been calling them the idols, and I, sure. I that I've idols. never called them that in previous games, but I guess that's what we're calling it now, the idols. Yeah, I, and I 100% agree with you. I, I still am a huge fan of a Splatoon 1 uh, Squid Sisters. Yes. Classics! Yeah. Thelma and Louise. Can't can't beat that. Um okay, well before before we jump into all that, Corporal, what you been drinking lately, my guy? My guy. My dude. Atomic pumpkin. Mm. A spicy <laughs> pumpkin new Belgium beer. So where do you go from that? As the season goes on and we get more into fall, where do you go from atomic pumpkin? Like, that seems like the one you're drinking on Halloween, because it doesn't get more pumpkin-y than that. So I, I'm, I'm, th I'm shuddering to think of what you're going to be in this time next month. So we, we've had this discussion off camera, but I'll, for those of you who don't know, I live in the Florida Orlando Disney bubble. So you don't even get fall. I don't know why you're into pumpkin anything. As far as weather con is concerned, you're right. We don't get fall. Our winter is... January and February. Those are the coldest months of our year. And because we live in a retail market so heavily saturated by that's controlled by Disney, constantly trying to be ahead of the realm on the calendar, right now is our Halloween. And by the time October comes, it's Christmas. We have already started transitioning <laughs> into Christmas. So by the time October comes, I'm going to be having peppermint beer. Like, it's just, it's a fact of life. You're a man out of time. You're a man out of time. I'm a man ahead of time. No, you're, but, well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the only time I can ever think of, say that to Florida. But, um, I've been drinking a lot of coffee. Yeah. Um, I've been drinking, um, some of that super coffee. Uh, they used to be called Key 2. I've been drinking some of that. I got some my hands on a little small bag of Rook that I cooked up. Um, yeah, good stuff. Oh, Jeremy, what's up? You're not a hipster or a millennial. Pumpkin spice shouldn't even be considered. <laughs> Thank you, Fate. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, what have you been playing? Hmm. Sp Splatoon? Mystery. Splatoon. I am, uh, as of tomorrow, I will be three event quests behind on uh, Sunbreak. I am, I am not ready for the update. Uh, I think I'm Master Rank 110, though. I don't think... <laughs> JoJo. Uh, so we were in Chams. I was in Chams chat earlier today. And oh, yeah. uh, I was like, everybody was like, Nintendo Dads, Nintendo, Nintendo Dads, Nintendo Fathers. <laughs> We are the Nintendo Fathers. Um, 
But yeah, same. Been playing a whole lot of Splatoon and a little and a dash of Cyberpunk because I yeah. watched Edge Runners. I feel like I said this this time last week on the last episode. Or no, it was on Sunday. The Sunday yes. episode. We did a special Sunday episode, yeah. Yeah, I got through I got through the whole season, though. Cry. I cry. But now I have a whole lot of Cyberpunk to play. But this episode isn't about Cyberpunk. It's about Splatoon. Yes! Um... So, I think right off the bat, right, we're ready to jump into this. We're ready to jump into the ink. Um, <laughs> uh, so, the number one thing about Splatoon 3 is the multiplayer. So, we're going to talk about story mode. We're going to talk about Salmon Run. We're going to talk about the weapons, the new stages, specials, all that stuff. But we're going to start with the core of multiplayer. And if you listened to our... Uh, review of the Splatfest, the early impressions thing of the demo, um, you're going to recognize a lot of what we have to say because the reason that this game feels so fresh and that it is just superior to Splatoon 2 pretty much across the board, besides features and content and stuff, is the movement. There's faster movement. You're not stuck in the enemy ink like glue and cement like you were in Splatoon 2. You actually can outplay people. You can be aggressive. The way I played Splatoon 2 and the way I currently play Splatoon 3 are not even the same, like, playstyle at all because Splatoon 2's movement was so much more sluggish than Splatoon 3. Corporal. I'm trying to, like, keep up with everything here. Okay. <laughs> I've, got, I've got Twitch running, Facebook running Corporal Nostrich's Twitch so I can view it from a third account so we get the views. I've got the, the, uh, the notes up on the screen. Don't forget the card battles. We will not forget the card battles. They're in here. Everything was just rolling rolling behind here. Hi, huh, Graptacular. Okay. Welcome in. They said, funny, movement is the big gameplay difference in Monster Hunter as well. Yes. Games are getting faster. Faster and faster. Yeah, I so... I know you and I played Splatoon 2 a couple times before 3 came out. What is your, like, vibes on the movement and the overall pace of the gameplay? So that was actually my biggest gripe, right? So we went from Splatoon 1, which I immediately fell in love with. I thought Splatoon 1 was superior to all because it was the original and the only. <laughs> and you're an old man, and you're like, the I, first I, one's I, the best yep, one! Yep, yep. So I... When Splatoon 2 came out, I am not as highly technical on certain stats and statistics as you and Yeti are. So whenever we would talk, it was always like, I can feel that there is something off. Something is different about Splatoon 2 that I do not like. But I couldn't like pinpoint exactly what it was. And as the game aged... More and more people were like, yeah, it's definitely the movement. Something about the yeah. movement has changed. And I, while I still enjoyed playing the concept, I could not own the way I thought I could in Splatoon 1 anymore. Yeah. Splatoon 2. So I gave up. Uh, I truly feel, while it, it is not the exact same as Splatoon 1, Splatoon 3 has definitely brought it back to its roots. I think there's improvements, I think there's changes, but I think they've all been the right and correct changes. Yeah, this takes, this is way more, feels more like Splatoon 1 than Splatoon 2 did. 2 did. Yeah. And I can play, because I was a run and gun, offensive, evasive player in Splatoon 1. And Splatoon 2, you just couldn't really play that way, um, because the movement was slower, it prioritizes range and positioning over, like, fast movement. Um, so I had to completely change the way I played in Splatoon 2, which was like a midliner backliner. Mm -hmm. And then Splatoon 3 came out, and I immediately started playing the midliner backliner uh, when we had the demo. And then I was like, you know what? Let me try some of these other weapons, because, you know, it's Splatfest. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can get kills. I can be aggressive. I can juke people. Like, this is like Splatoon 1. And now that Splatoon 3 is out and we've had some more time with it, I can confirm that is still the case. Uh, it's not as simple 
uh, with all the specials and area control things that are going on, but we'll talk about that. Um, but yeah, movements, movements, the big, the big thing here, the big sell. Um, weapons. What do you, what do you feel about weapons? Because I have so, some strong feelings about the weapons, which I'll save for I, after you talk. In Splatoon One, I was a roller. I 100% dedicated roller. I'm an ink man. Call me Bob Ross. I will ink the floor. That's my jam. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I I love love playing roller, but in Splatoon Two, I obviously found the the paintbrush and. Mm-hmm. The Splatoon 2 movement, while making the paintbrush a unique weapon, I think the movement really boxed the brush. If the brush was in one with the one movement, you would have done a lot better. Yeah. Splatoon 3. mm, The brush is back, baby. That paintbrush can slap. Now you're talking. You play the Octo paintbrush, right? The bigger I, one. I right now I'm playing the Octo paintbrush. I'll be honest with you. I absolutely hate the special on the Octo brush. Oh um, yes, um, ink. It's like the Spider-Man thing. Ink. Yes. Oh my gosh, I forget what it's called because I hate it so much too. So I I am currently bouncing back and forth between roller and uh, paintbrush, um, and I I'm finding a medium here and there. If I could. Like, cross my fingers and wish for anything. Uh, above, like, all the things, there's, like, probably a top three things that I would change. The, um, I think the top one thing I would change. About the entire be, world. If you could change anything. No, I'm talking about... It would be that... <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, the entire world, I'd need a bigger list. No, you only get one thing, and it's still to change the <laughs> inkbrush set. <laughs> <laughs> On the paintbrush. On the paintbrush, yeah. Yeah, so... So I have absolutely fallen in love with the 52 gal. It's got I feel like good. You said the fawn. I fawn in love. I fawn. That is a dear fawn. If I oh, know. I am fawning over the 52. But yeah, 52 gal, good mid ranger support slash slayer weapon. You got the ink wall. It's a two hit kill. So like, bam, bam. That's it. Um, I have. That's my strongest weapon by far. Because of the splash wall. If it wasn't because of the splash wall, I I would not, I probably wouldn't play the weapon, or at least I wouldn't play it the way I play it now. Mm-hmm. The splash wall is an example of something in the kit that's not the main weapon that makes the kit. Because yep. the splash wall and the um, the uh, the Dolby 5.1 speakers, uh, Killer Whale 5.1. Um, is such a good kit, and I I get almost all my kills from setting up the splash wall, either, like, reaction to somebody attacking me, or, like, to push forward the line, and then getting right up to it and just spraying. Um, but I digress in my love for the 52. I think a lot of weapons are defined slash limited by their kit, because there's a bunch of weapons that I like that I would play but the, I can't, I can't deal with their specials. The, um, the Spider-Man the ink special. Specials. Yeah, go ahead. And, um, the stamper is, like, broken. Like, the hitboxes on it just, like, straight up don't work. Um, yeah. There's some, I, some specials need adjustment. The, the specials in these particular weapons, like, make or break whether you're not whether or not you can be successful I, i've gotten to the point now where i can just use the paintbrush and uh grab tackler makes a, a point here in in the chat but like i will i will get myself into a position anchor myself with the special and run into the enemy base and paint the heck out of everything they will spawn and come after me but by that point my special is over and it Pulls me back, and so I can run in, paint, and be bounced out. And that's the only way I can use that special because. But you're just running in regular. They're not even using like the Spider-Man. No, because thing. you have to you have to aim up, 
get a grabbable surface, shoot up to the grabbable surface. Now you're up in the air. You need to then uh, shoot down to a paintable surface, and then you need to attack. I can get in that space a whole lot faster by swimming. Yeah. Yeah, every time I've used it, I just end up in a super weird spot. Um, what's the... I'm trying to think of the other special that I really don't like um, that's on a weapon that I really the do like. I don't... Yeah, I mean, I just think I don't know how to use the jetpack very well. I don't like it. I recognize that it's a good tool. It's a good special. I yeah. personally don't like it. The Ink Spider-Man thing, I think it's objectively bad. I have not heard one person say like, oh, it's so good. It's like, no, it's pretty universally. I don't know anybody who, first off, the, the Spider-Man thing dies way too soon. It needs to be significantly longer in order for it to be actually effective. And yeah. secondly, I think it needs to give something else besides just the ability to climb walls. Like, yeah. You should be. You like, should get armor. You should get armor with it. It looks like armor. You yeah. should have some some shots of armor. I was armor. gonna say that, or every place that you land leaves a huge puddle of your ink. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough to compare it. Uh, the The missiles were supposed to get nerfed, and they really didn't. Like they're a little better, but I feel like I get killed by missiles all the time. They still disrupt like the entire like area. Like I don't, I don't think it's. They're, they're, the, what we're trying to say is that there's a lot of weapons that if you don't like the special, there's no other options because it's not like yeah. there's weapons that have multiple sets yet, 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 yet. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, okay, so compare current with Splatoon Two. Splatoon Two allows a whole bunch of rerolls and allows some variations of some weapons. I think there ended up being like almost. There were four, I think there were four variations of most, most weapons, weapons. Yeah, most but that was like, weapons. that was like three updates and a bonus weapon update that brought kits back that were in Splatoon 1. Um, so that's, you know, that's after some time. I don't think we're all of a sudden going to get four different options, we but I think they're going to roll them out slowly over time over the next two that years. That was my point. That was my point is that we got to almost the middle of the Splatoon 2 infancy before they're turned into... <clears throat> oh, your, your wife is texting me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Splatoon 2 infancy, before we ended up actually getting those extras. So we are so early in Splatoon 3 infancy that I feel like it's going to take quite a while before we see that type of update. I know, but these... I feel like these specials are such strong flavors like they define the weapons more than i think they did in splatoon 2 yeah. so like we need variations like right now like please please nintendo please give us some different sets most of the sub weapons are all right like maybe like uh the the point sensor is like something i pretty actively avoid um but mostly it's the the specials. But all around, I think the new, I think the addition to the specials, the triple ink strike, the vacuum, um, the crab tank, like they're cool. They're dynamic. Oh, yeah. They're fun to use. Yep. So they that's definitely a draw. So that's the other thing. Certain weapons in that special, some people will choose a weapon for the special alone because of how important they feel it is to the battlefield. Oh, yeah. People only play... En well, NZAP's pretty good, but, like, people only play NZAP for the Tacticooler. People only play certain weapons so that they have the vacuum. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's the really clutch support specials that people will go out of their way to play. Because Tacticooler, if w you have to have at least one person on your team with Tacticooler, and you have a huge advantage. Yeah. Um, and then Vacuum is great, especially on some of the ranked modes where you have to defend a certain spot. Like, yep. you have vacuum, you are totally negating the enemy push, or if you're by yourself, you're probably stalling it for, like, at least five seconds. The only other thing that is as important as, as the specials is the clothing kits. Well, <laughs> the style. Sure. Um, I'm slowly getting some gear. I'm slowly getting some gear. I think I was streaming yesterday... Uh, and you were in the chat, and I was, like, yeah. making a kit, and you were like, oh, my God, like, you got gear. 
Yeah, I, I have like one third of the amount of clothing that you. Because I, you know, you can order, you can order stuff from the. I mean, you still have to go in the game to claim it, but you can yeah. order stuff. There's different things on the phone app every day, um, oh. which is. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. The phone app. On the phone app, there's gear that you can only order through the phone app. What? Oh yeah, I've I we we've been over this. No. This is this is decorations from Monster Hunter all over again. I told you about this. I'm positive. <laughs> you gotta stay is stylish. It, is it in the catalog? No, it's in. Hold on, we're gonna do a live. This is a live thing. All right, so you open your Nintendo app. Yep. Yep. Hopefully yep. you don't have crazy bad glare like we do. Um, you go to the home section. You go to Splatfest Shop. It's really hard doing it backwards. Splatfest Shop. And you have three pieces of gear that are the daily drop that will go away after a certain amount of hours. And then you have gear on sale now, which is your gear uh, for the day. And at 8 p.m., it resets. So 8 p.m. is the end of their day, um, I guess, because it's universal time. Uh, so at the end of the day, all this gear for the gear in the shop will reset. Which, actually, I haven't looked. I haven't looked at these. I haven't looked at these. I see something I want to order. I'm ordering these shoes. Um, yeah. Mark, thank you for liking the stream. And Jesson as well. Not Jason. Jesson. Um. Where do you see Splatfest Shop? What? It's right there. Splatnet Shop. Oh, net. Okay. Splatnet Shop. You, you did. That's not what you said. Oh, well, it's Splatnet Shop. Um. Yes. So those shoes is main weapon ink saver. Yeah. That, okay, for those of you who play Paintbrush, I think Main Weapon Ink Saver is clutch to being able to dominate. Mandatory, because if you run out of ink, more, oh in more than any other weapon, you are absolutely Tositos. You either want a ink, uh, a faster ink refill, or a Main Weapon uh, Saver. Everybody that is, I, I see so many people favoring main weapon saver over ink refill. Yeah, I, I personally think that's, that's better. That, that's what I've done. I don't know why that's what I've done, but that's what I've done and all my kids do. Um, so yeah, I think the, the clothing items have never looked better. Like, there is such a diverse, like, all kinds of styles. Um, we're slowly, I mean, it's really going to open up. After this Splatfest, because nobody has um, nobody has uh, sea snails yet to add slots and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. So I do think it's cool the way you can upgrade clothing. If you see it again in the shop and you already own it, you can add a star to add an additional yeah. slot. So that's been like the only way to add slots before we have sea snails. Um, I think... A, I had one more point on the weapons. I think some weapons are good, but nobody plays them because they have really weak kits for what their roles yeah. are supposed to be. Not to jump back into weapon discussion, but I, I had one more point about you that. Can't let go. I, I can't let go. I want to play Dynamo Roller so bad, but it just doesn't, just doesn't click. <laughs> um, Graptacular mentioned you can also donate ink to earn, like, ink a shower cap. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's true, too. I have that I have that later in the episode. But, yeah, in the thing, um, well, we'll g I'll get to it. I'll get to it because we're going to talk about, like, daily tasks and things that you can do. Um, maps. Let's talk about them maps. Oh, okay. So, so uh, <laughs> we're about, like, maps. Splatoon 1 had, I thought, objectively great maps. There were... R.I.P. Salt Spray Rig. There were some areas that could have used with more verticality, but they were pretty great overall. Splatoon 2, I felt like, were too big or maybe too wide and not long, if that makes sense. And it was like, always... you were like, you were like bottlenecked in your spawn, and then it was like a giant open area where you were always like fighting 1v1 if yeah. you didn't like stick with your team. Yeah, like, it was very exactly. like... <sighs> And Splatoon 2 presented the problem where they could literally spawn camp you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so that was most of Splatoon 2's. They that with Splatoon 3 by making the spawns higher than most of the battlefield, 
and you really aren't able to get up there unless you like well you can't because you yeah you have that platform but also you're shooting out so you can shoot yeah. to the left or shoot to the right exactly so they, they pre present pre presented pre prevented wow i can't talk hello sarah uh really prevented that from being an issue uh in splatoon 3 which is phenomenal because that was a big problem um yeah i think i think they have i think they've made the maps like longer and narrower mm -hmm. but i don't i don't feel like the naps the naps the maps are particularly narrow i just feel like you get the same amount the same amount of uh like square footage but the bases are so much farther apart that like if you get behind the enemy lines into their base it feels like an achievement because it's like you're in there in there um, as Splatoon 2, it was just like the enemy spawn was like this far away from the middle. And it's like if you could push past the middle and win one team fight, they'd be blocked in. Um, what? And I, I also think that in general, the maps have been designed with that narrower thing and it creates decided choke points. Instead of the entire map being just a brawl, um, it feels like. There are critical points that your team is naturally guided to, and then that's where the team fights happen. Not just choke points, but I think they also improved verticality of the maps. So definitely, have... not in an annoying way, because there were some yes. very annoying vertical maps in Splatoon yeah. Two. Yeah, yeah, but they they definitely improved on that. So, um, do you? I I actually had to look up a bunch of the names because I still don't have the names memorized yet. Memorized but it. Eel Tail Alley, uh, Mako Mart, which was a Splatoon 2 stage, uh, Sturgeon Shipyard, which was another Splatoon 2 stage, and Mince, Wheat, Mince Meat Metal Works are... Mahi. Yo, Mahi Mahi sucks. <laughs> Mahi Mahi... Every map, the, the four that I just mentioned are my favorites, and I feel like they're very well designed. All the other maps are well designed, they're good, I like them. Except Mahi Mahi is the one where the water levels change. Oh, Seaside Park. Yes. Seaside Park can burn in hell because Mahi Mahi is garbage. I well, don't like it. Who, who don't know Seaside Park is a... If you've watched the Jersey Shore, that's the most, yeah. unfortunately, the show, in the... The TV show Jersey Shore, that's Seaside Park. The, that Mahi Mahi map reminds me of Seaside Park. Yeah, and, but it smells much worse because Mahi Mahi <laughs> stinks. I don't like it. Every match devolves. This is the only map in the game where spawn camping becomes as big of an issue as it was in Splatoon 2. If I recall, Mahi Mahi is probably one of the most blainest, plainest, blain, plain... Bland? Bland. Bland, yes. Bland fish that you can eat. Like, they use it for a lot of different things because it's cheap and easy. And it's exactly how I feel about this level. <laughs> um, yeah, it just... It's definitely cheap, and it's the opposite of easy. I don't even care. It's not even the water levels falling and rising. Like, I'm cool with that. It's the yep. damn... It's just... It's the exact same problem. It's got a very narrow choke point that's just past the middle of the map that you can spawn camp in. And it's got a little layer, you know, so you can, you're not actually getting spawn camp, but, like, you get boxed in really quick. And then the whole rest of the map is just, like, an open brawl, and they're sort of a, they sort of direct you to a choke point with, like, the high little platforms you can jump on. But, man, every time I play that map, it's usually a stomp one way or the other, and it's usually because one team is getting totally spawn camped and blocked inside their own base so map design i think is a critical up upgrade from yeah. splatoon 2 except mahi mahi i got it a out part of me wishes that there was more map diversity maybe a rotation of three maps every hour instead of two or something like that you yeah know I, mean? I mean and it also there's only 12 maps yeah, there's only so 12 maps so i feel like they're getting diversity. They're getting stale pretty quickly. I would think they're probably going to announce... Well, maybe not. Because they it's going to be like seasons, right? Like it's going to... You're going to yeah. have a three-month season, three-month season. I I feel like they are, they are going to have to introduce new weapon sets and new maps before the end of the fall. We are rolling into like the holiday hallway of the calendar. The holiday hallway. 
Yeah, you never heard that? <laughs> no. It, it's Holiday Alley or Holiday Hallway. It, it's the next couple months is just boom, boom, boom. Holiday, 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 back to back. And Why I, is it a hallway? Because it's in a row. It's like continuous. I, I didn't holiday know. line, holiday alignment, holiday combo, holiday hallway. Holiday alley, like there's a whole bunch of different variations. I, I just like what's at the end of the hallway, Santa? He's just standing there. What are you doing in my house? New Year's. <laughs> it's, it's it, honestly, you can you can even string it all the way to Valentine's Day if you really want. Oh jeez! Don't you make me repeat that. Anyway, <laughs> I I still think that they could start releasing seasonal decorated maps. I don't, well, I mean, so they do have daytime, nighttime, and, uh, like, sunset versions of all the maps. Sure. Um, I think we'll get new maps before we get variations of these maps. I, I want snow on my battlefield. Listen, and you want a pumpkin spice bishopin. We know. You like variation things. I'm telling you. One thing that Epic Games and Fortnite does right is incorporate the seasons and, and everything, everything social, pop culture, social events into their map. The entire one top of, forty just it's jammed one of the in there. Why Fortnite is so damn popular is because of their constant versatility in their maps. How many v how many V bucks are they paying you to say this? Dude, <laughs> I I don't even play the game. But they do it right that I will promote them for that alone. And all the maps in Fortnite are better than Mahi Mahi. I said it. Uh, I, I agree. <laughs> Melissa, welcome in. You came in at a strange, at a strange transition there. Um, but yeah, so maps overall, awesome. Let's go to where you go right before you go to the maps. The lobby system. <gasps> Oh, so much better than Splatoon 2. Oh, my goodness. My Splatoon 2 lobby was the bane. There wasn't a Splatoon 2 lobby. There were so many times that we were like, do you want to play together? Well, yeah, but I really am going to end up on the other team, so I'll just kill you. This is this is how Splat Splatoon 2, Splatoon 3's lobby is like you go to a train station, you meet your friend at the platform, you leisurely board a train, you sit down in your seats, and you go on the train. Splatoon 2's lobby system was your friend with really bad service is like, oh, I'm on the C train, and you waited for it to go by, and you jumped onto the side of it, and maybe you fell off and died. Maybe you made it on the inside. That was That's exactly how the lobbies work. And if you did make it on the inside, there was still the 50-50. You you might not be in the same car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're really stretching this train metaphor. But you might not be in the same car, and therefore will have to fight your friend, as they do on trains now. Especially if you're in like New York, that makes sense yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this new this new lobby system is a lot better. Having the training area is awesome being able to make a lobby people join you can see them like yeah. it's nice uh i'm gonna i'm gonna do this in two levels of criticism um okay. so a the sugar lobbies great perfect when they work we'll get to that um there needs to be like just a little just the lobbies would be so perfectly functional a couple things you need to be able to change your weapons and your gear in the lobby. Yeah. That, that Not, seems like a basic human right, right? Is to be able to change your gear while you're waiting to join a game. John, there you go. Team fun. Team fun. I took your advice, Presto. Yes. That is John Tendo, and he is on Team Fun. I thought it was John Tendo. It did look familiar. No, uh, so you can change your weapon after the end of each battle, before you get dropped back into the lobby. Yes. It makes no sense, because you should be able to change your weapon while you're in the lobby. Yes. While you're in the lobby, you have the ability to test the weapon before the game starts. The problem with that, and I think the reason why they didn't do it, is because the lobby is the countdown room before the game triggers. What if 
you are in the midst of trying a weapon and then the game starts. So you can't you can't try you can try a weapon in the shop but you can't try a weapon from the gear selection screen. Yeah, but it's if you only chose from the that, shop. If you chose that weapon, yeah. You're now playing that weapon and what if you chose that weapon and you're like, "Oh wait, I don't like this weapon or this weapon won't go for the synergy of my team. I need to switch." Oh, too late. The game has started. I mean, then that's, I mean, that's the same, that's the same system as the change your gear thing, uh, right? I mean, if time I, runs out. Yeah. You, so you should be able to change your gear. Yeah. At least. Um, I, I, I agree with you. I just wanted to provide a devil. You back. should know when your party is backing out of a game and back into the lobby. Because if we're all playing and then someone says, as soon as you finish the match, the screen comes up. Actually, guys, hold on. I have to go to the bathroom. Back out. Some people have already clicked yes. This guy's backing out. Your lobby is now split. It yeah. should they should just they should either make it so that you can see and you can change your mind or it's just whoever's lobby, whoever is hosting the lobby makes the decision to continue as a group or back out back into the lobby as a group. That's This would also would have helped if they included voice chat. Yeah. But here's a here's the thing. A lot of kids play this game, and a lot of really, really competitive people play this game, and you don't want to mix those groups yeah. blindly on voice chat, because arrests will be made. <laughs> um, I, I don't... This is not Xbox. Of, this is not Xbox Live. The that have told me to go sleep with their mom is absurd okay? i listen no we don't need voice chat voice chat in Splatoon. <laughs> it would be nice to be able to turn it on in game but like a default all matches have voice chat would be disastrous even if it was only people on your team um but you need to be able to know when people are backing out of the damn match because it constantly splits parties up it's annoying you have to wait um, yeah, I agree. My daughter is seven and plays this game more than I do. Yeah, you yeah, we don't know. want to mix those groups. I and agree. I don't think Nintendo, I think that's sort of in Nintendo's DNA is that no first party Nintendo game will ever have native voice, voice chat beyond the silly app, which so I the, guess I mean, works. Just use Discord, me, be a human. From a family friendly company, I feel like that's their way of protecting the children who play the Marios. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you need to know when your party's backing out. And there needs to be an option to cancel matchmaking without, like, unplugging or shutting down the game. Because if you hit ready by accident, and then, oh my god, my dog's eating my tax return. No! Like, you need to be able to cancel out of matchmaking. Like, just hold a button, back out. Like, why is that hard? Because there you have to shut off many, your switch. It's too many people who are in a match who cancel out, and now the party moves forward with two two guys down. No, but just just make it just give it like a five second thing where it locks everybody in, and then it makes sure for five seconds that nobody is manually disconnected, and then it starts the match. You have to be able to. You can't trap people against their will. <laughs> you I mean, can't do that. It's this not an Nintendo. escape room. Lobbies are not should not have to be an escape room. <laughs> the amount of times that Nick Yeti has queued into a match and been like, okay, hold on. And we're like, Nick Yeti offline. He's like, yeah, I just shut down the game every time. <laughs> so those those three issues, you need to be able to change. You need to be able to change your gear. You need to be able to see when people are backing out of lobbies. And you need to be able to back out of a queue. That is such a Nick Yeti thing to do. Like, I don't even want to be bothered with this shutdown. I ran down to my basement. I turned the power off to my house. <laughs> They're not getting me. Um, those are the three, like, just quality of life, like, come on, Nintendo, it's 2022 things that they need to change. If they don't change them, it's not the end of the world, but they should. They really should. So I wonder if the issue of backing out of matchmaking is what's causing your fourth bullet point here. It's not. It's not because it would happen way earlier. You think so? Yes. Okay. All right. So, I mean, maybe it has something to do with it. So this is the part of the episode 
that is going to be the biggest criticism. And if you have Splatoon 3, if you've been following Splatoon 3's launch, you already know what's coming. Um, yeah. The disconnects are out of control. The disconnects, the network errors, the amount of times that you're either waiting for a match or you're in a lobby or you've started a match and it happens and it gives you that thing that explains somebody, one or more players, has disconnected in the first 30 seconds. We're not going to count. Now, let me be let me be clear. Um, this is better than fighting matches 3v4, I think. Because that happened so often in Splatoon 2 and it was so frustrating. I would much... If it's in the first 30 seconds of a match... I would rather just chalk the match and go back into matchmaking than do two and a half more minutes of 3v4. Because that's never, like, it's very rarely fun. Um, so that I'm on board with. But it happens so frequently. If the Disconnects, disconnect network error, errors. If the disconnect error is a, like, forward-facing response to the background issue of 3v4... I would much rather they be more transparent. Well, they kind of are, because they say a player has backed out in the first 30 seconds. Like, the match is made, it's started, but almost none of the match has been played. The ent the majority of the match is going to be 3v4. I mean, they could explain it that way. Just be like, hey, one of these teams is about to get absolutely stopped. We're not, we don't advocate violence, so we're just going to step in and say no contest. Or... Or when that happens, no, don't give them the vote. No, choice. no, no. This is not a democracy. <laughs> this is not a democracy. I tried, people. I tried. This is not a democracy. This is a Wendy, sir. <laughs> um, yeah, but so the disconnects slash. Uh, this game has way better issues with lag and netcode than Splatoon Two. But damn, if somebody is if somebody got a happy meal with their McDonald's Wi-Fi that they're playing this game on, you know it. Like there's not a lot of times where it's like in between where you're like, I think they might be lagging. It's like I killed them, I went to the grocery store, got my groceries for the day, came back and then exploded into ink. Like there are some delayed delayed kills. Gamaliel, thank you for liking the stream. Um there, there are some, there are some laggy, laggy things that happen, um, and then you usually get a disconnect. Um, but yeah, they need to, they need to somehow figure out how to like if somebody's lagging a lot for it not to affect the entire match. Like just somehow like get it cornered so where it just is laggy to them and it's normal for everybody else. It's probably not how that works, but uh, yeah. Um, the lag, occasionally, again, not nearly as bad as Splatoon 2, this is a minor criticism, but the amount of disconnects and network errors, they gotta figure something out, like duct tape it together, Nintendo. And it's, it, this, this is like the biggest criticism, if you search Splatoon 3 review, that's mm -hmm. gonna be the biggest problem that people are having. Um. So, besides the biggest criticism... The rest of the game, I think, is completely an upgrade yes. from everything in the past. It's so good. Um, yeah, that that's really going to be the harshest criticism. Um, but everything else is good. And, I mean, it's an important criticism, and it needs to be addressed. But if, if they screwed up the movement, it wouldn't have been the same game. If they really botched the map design, it would have been the same game. The disconnects and things are annoying. They affect the game less than other areas that they knocked out of the park on. Um, for tournaments, though, if you're playing tournaments, it does become a much bigger problem. Because I watched, um, I think it was... Oh, Alpha Rad. Alpha Rad had a Splatoon 3 tournament, and getting eight people to connect in a lobby took so long because they would have seven people and then there would be a disconnect or a network error or a server thing. And it was like, it took forever for them to play through that tournament because of the network issues. 
it's like even if it's like a five percent chance that you're gonna have a network issue if you're trying to play with seven other people it's gonna happen like way more frequently than uh than you would normally expect um but again everything else is really good i want to talk about upgrades i want to talk about the daily things you can do because in splatoon 2 you could check the shops but there weren't a lot of like daily things to do in this i think there are um and we've already talked about the splatnet app um and how you can check that every day for new gear that you can order only through this Splatfest. Splatfest. I maybe I did say that before. Splatnet app. <laughs> um you can go into um I forget what it's called now. Uh when you're in the thing, you can go into Wandercrust, which is this little thing right here, this little bike. Um and when you click it, it will bring up um this little journey thing and I think these are going to be a seasonal thing. You tap on that, and you basically donate the amount of points you've gotten throughout different matches uh, to, like, different amounts. And as long as you're playing throughout the season, you can just do this, and it doesn't, like, it, it doesn't affect anything. Other than when you complete a stage um, of this Wandercrust thing, you get a prize. And if you complete them all, you get a nice piece of gear. Um, so that's something that you can do daily. It doesn't really last that long. Um, yeah, you, I mean, if you're going to donate to it, then you need to be playing that day. Uh, no, it's, yeah. it's like your total lifetime points. So if you've, oh. if you've, if you've played and sprayed and gotten a hundred thousand points, you could have never touched it and you'll have a hundred thousand points and you'll just do like all of it at once. Okay, like cool. you can you can probably do all of it now if you haven't touched it at all yet. I haven't. Um so that everything with the Splatnet app that's daily is good. Obviously you can check all the shops for daily gear. The catalog is interesting because although it's not a daily thing, you have your general level, which determines what weapons you get unlocked, which is another cool thing that's like a, a daily thing of getting new dripped content, but you have a catalog level. And every time you reach another a higher catalog level, you get something from the catalog for free. It's almost like think of catalog as a free battle pass. And every time you level it up, you get an item. Um, and I really hope they never go to a paid version of that because then it will feel a little bit grimy. Um, but having, having those, uh, rewards every every time you level up the catalog is really cool. Um, the gumball machine is really cool because you get a free, basically a 5,000 gold, which is really, really cheap, um, prize once a day, which is nice. During Splatfest, you get the uh, conch shells that also give you a free roll um, mm. for the gumball machine. Um, Honestly, I have not done the uh, the gumball machine thing yet. It's oh, really? I've I've, I think I've gotten the things. I just haven't actually done it. Yeah, you ju it's just you can do it right from the lobby or the the yeah the lobby, but not in a multiplayer lobby. Like you have to do it before you queue in, which I don't know why. I just downloaded the free wallpaper and the stickers that I got from the Wonderfest. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah, you get a, a bunch of cool digital stuff as well. Um, the collectibles are cooler than I thought. Um, splat tags. I care way more about my splat tag than I thought I was going to. I care where, way more about my um, locker than I okay, thought so I was right going there, to. I, I want to pause on the locker. Okay. Uh, so, which, which was the Nintendo game? Was it the, the Dodgeball or was it the Ninjala? Where you had Ninjala. Ninjala. Ninjala had a locker. It was a room or whatever. And it could be decorated and upgraded and customized and blah blah. The locker I think and you can try to argue this, but is almost pointless. Oh no, it's totally pointless. What I think should be done is the like the starting screen 
maybe the animation has changed where like your locker pulls up your locker door opens and you step out of your locker onto the the stage so that you can then you know fanfare what you are actually customizing because otherwise there's no point that is such a good idea that is right? such a good idea here the only the only thing i can think of that being a problem is that would that could drastically increase loading times because you have to load every sticker and every item for eight lockers for like a two second cinematic i i don't know it's a really good idea though like i really dig that i think that would make lockers relevant or like maybe in the lobby like the 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 loading lobby maybe your locker is there on display it is no so that your other teammates can see it oh I, i mean yeah you usually can if you're playing with people you can usually find their locker in that locker room I think it's, like, people that you recently played with, but if you're in a lobby with somebody, I've always been able to find uh, the locker. It's not, it's not, you, it's, like, random, but, yeah. Um, but the splash I, tags, there's some cool splash tags. Splash tags the are the, splash tags, I, I the cosmetic like the that matters. Tags, and I also like the names. The, yes, like the, the titles. The, the titles, yes. Yes, what, do you know what your current title is? I'm, like, still a baby something, or young whatever mine is now professional life of the party (laughs) i also will vary it and i have the as the first part so it can just be the something Mm -hmm. so i'll be like the crab (laughs) everyone will have these very long elaborate things and then you just see me the crab um, I can't remember what mine was in the demo because in the demo you had access to all of them. Yeah. Things. Oh yeah. Which one? I, I I chose something that was very snarky, but I can't remember. What yeah, it was. I remember I had something really funny too. <laughs> I wonder if I'll, I'll I'll probably remember if I unlock it. I'll be like, oh yeah, that was the lobby yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. We'll have to go back and look at the stream to see what they yeah. were. Um. So yeah, splash tags are super cool. Um. I think the. The catalog and the general store could be explained a little bit better. I feel like there's a lot of very clear representation of, like, the catalog and what's laid out. So, fun fact, if you go in the Splatnet app, you can go into the catalog section and see what all the rewards are going to be for the entire season. But you can't do it in-game. You can only do it from the phone app, which I don't think that's correct. They should have it so that you can see it in-game. I don't know why on earth the phone app is as good as it is. It's really good, but it also is, like, weirdly necessary for some things. But but that's my point. Why? Nintendo. Why because is, Nintendo. Why is the, you can't include native voice chat in most of your games. You have to then load a side app for half of the things that xbox and playstation and pc just have natively like i just don't understand what is nintendo's fascination with the mobile device they i don't know and that's the thing is like they don't have a ton of like they don't promote it either no they're just like if you know you know good luck exactly (laughs) like there's not even a squid that's in the corner who's wearing a trench coat and be like hey i think they say it i think they say it one time when you make a lobby It'll say, like, you want the voice chat turned on or off for the phone version of this lobby that is now being made because you're making it in-game. That's the only time they reference the app. And if you don't know what it is, you're just like, wait, what? Yep. A phone? My phone? You want to borrow my phone? I don't understand. Um, but, yeah, so I think the catalog can be explained a little bit better. Um, the gear upgrade system is miles better from 2. And it feels a little bit limited right now without the Super C snails, but I am hoping they are liberal with those snails uh, come the Splatfest. Uh, yeah, yes. Because I need them. so, too. I need them. We all need them. It's tough out here. <laughs> These re-rolls, I'm not relying on luck. Um, so, yeah, I think, like, I have things to do on Splatoon 3 that 
impact my gameplay or my enjoyment of the game. I have things to do on the game every day that I enjoy doing that aren't playing the main mode. So I think that's good. I yep. count that as a win. I'm always interested. I'm always like, oh, what item am I going to get? What things are going to be in the shops? Like, And maybe it's still just the honeymoon phase, but... I feel like I mean, there's a bunch of places to get that like gambling addiction daily reward thing from in this game. I, we haven't we haven't touched on it just yet, but we're about to. But like Salmon Run, Anarchy Battle, Story Mode, and whatever the card game is going to end up being. <laughs> I, I feel like there are enough other options for even if you don't have the skill set to survive in a competitive environment like the game pl play is. You still have other things that you can do that still make this game fun. Yeah. Um, so let's let's talk about these in no particular order. Um, Salmon Run. So Salmon Run is a returning thing. It's a four-player co-op versus the environment. You're trying to get eggs. You're trying to throw them in. This was an I addition. Abandoned... I abandoned Splatoon 2 before I even touched this. So this is my first time ever playing Salmon Run. I'm extremely happy with it, and I could care less what anybody who has ate for it. This is fun for me. Yeah, so it was introduced in Splatoon 2. I enjoyed it in Splatoon 2 for a while. Um, then it's back in Splatoon 3. It's arguably better in Splatoon 3. If you played it in 2... It's better in 3. Like, I played limited amounts of it in 2 because I didn't really like it. 3, I like it more. Um, there's new maps. There's a lot of new enemies. There's a lot of things. I have one major issue with it, though. And, Corbel, you already you already gotten this spiel. It's too... It's too random. It's too dependent so on random, luck. The random that you're referring to, is it the weapon choices? for the map is it the bosses that spawn in the map or is it the combination of weapons that are being used with the bosses that make it almost impossible yes <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's the weapon rotation has been whack like there are at least two weapons on most rotations that are just like like what do i do with this for this mode <laughs> The archery um, being one of them. Yeah, the the weapon selection has not been great. There's been some solid rotations, but I think in general the rotations have been like you're you're in physical pain for at least part of it. Um, the maps vary a lot, especially when you start to talk about high and low tide, um, because some maps are just like so. It's weapons rolling the dice, maps also rolling the dice. The combination of those two and how they interact is is rolling the dice. Um, and then once you're in the levels, the level variance between high tide, low tide, gold flies, it just feels like your 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 experience can vary so much. And then you even get into where bosses spawn, how many of them spawn. Sometimes you can get three bosses spawn in one area that's like no you're dead you're dead because these spawn in this area other times three different bosses can spawn one boss can spawn 18 but like there's just too much variance and um i forget which youtube channel uh, so was but they did a really good video on like, why you should just sometimes not play salmon run after uh, looking at the selection like the sporadic and chaotic nature of that makes it a challenge Yes, but I want it to be a fair challenge. And even if it's not a fair challenge, I want it to be consistent. If you were always, if you always had a long range okay. weapon, I don't, I don't care about difficulty. Difficulty is fine. Because I, I was going to totally throw Halo Legendary mode at you and be like, let's talk about what's fair. Cons that yeah, shit ain't fair. No, it's it's but PVE. All I mean, we play Monster Hunter. Consistency is a key, though. I, that okay that i agree with consistency is the problem that's why i don't say salmon run is frustrating because it's hard salmon run is frustrating because it's random and it's inconsistent because i can have a match where we go three rounds in like you know record time 
get all the eggs. Well, not record times. It's a time thing. But, like, we can, we can cakewalk through, and then the next run, within the same level of difficulty, we will get absolutely wiped if we get the wrong combination of things on wave one. So, it also doesn't help that the best rewards are locked behind Salmon Run if you're trying to get ability points and abil- or ability chunks. Salmon Run is the most effective way to do it, and I don't, I don't think that's correct to hide the most valuable rewards behind an optional game mode. I don't know. That's how I feel about Salmon Run. It's cool in theory. I hope they tweak it a little bit so it's a little bit more consistent. Overall, it's fun, but if you're trying hard to beat it, you're going to run into bad luck, and that just doesn't feel good on anything that you're, like, trying to improve your skill at. Um, Anarchy Battles. Anarchy Battles are the new named for ranked modes. Um, so the big, the big change from Splatoon 2 to this, besides the name, are we now have series, which is a series of five, and you lose twice and you're out, and you're trying to get at least three wins. You pay some points to do the series, you do the five games, and then you get, like, several hundred points back if you do well, and that's how you climb the rank. And then open is just the standard thing that we had, um... In Splatoon 2, where you play it, you play one ranked battle, and then you can back out or continue. They said League is coming, which is that sort of, like, weird thing you can do with your friends for, like, two hours or something. Um, But it's not in yet. Um, I think Series is a cool addition. You absolutely have to play Series if you're trying to actually rank up, like, letter to letter, though. Shout out to uh, Fox King for uh, explaining the, uh, the point difference in our Discord. Have you played Anarchy at all? No. Yeah. I have just been playing Salmon Run. And I'll be honest with you, I am more excited about story mode than I am about Anarchy Run. So. Yeah. I. Uh, Anarchy mode, I want to play more Anarchy. Um, and it's so much, it's such a big difference. Um, when you're playing with other people on voice comms, like me and, uh, and foe were playing and we had two really good games and it was just half the team was just me and him on voice comms. Um, this game, (laughs) this game has nearly super smash brothers level of modes for any type player. Yeah. The ranking system is better for ranked as it is only tied to your performance and not your teams. Uh, no, I mean, you still go up and down um, in rank, whether you win or lose, like, as a team. Um, I would say it's less, it's definitely less frustrating than, um, Splatoon 2s, uh, because you get to see how many points you're winning and losing versus just, like, arbitrarily filling up, like, a vial. Um, the new maps have good adjustments, I think, for these ranked modes. Um, I still hate Clan Blitz and Rainmaker, uh, the one problem is, and this is probably going to be something that gets fixed over time, that's just hard right now because there's not enough players, like, the game hasn't been out long enough, but, like, mm-hmm. some of the matchmaking in Ranked is absolutely chalked. Because <laughs> people all, anybody with Splatoon 2, I think, started in B-, minus, um, and everybody else, I think, starts in C, but there are not enough people working their way up through the ranks fast enough because you you're having people in A rank fight S rank people and people in A rank fighting B rank people and just there's way too much different ranks fighting each other that is just the symptom of there not being the appropriate amount of people in each rank for it to be evenly distributed um i've heard a I've heard A rank and A plus are the worst. Really? Yeah, like are the worst as far as like matchmaking because you either gotcha. fight okay. fighting people way lower or way higher. Um, so I'm in. I'm clawing my way out of B minus. I haven't played a lot of it, and I just learned like today that series is the way to go. Um, and all my matches have been, I would say, eighty percent of my matches have been horrifically one sided. 
Like, whether I'm winning or losing. If I'm winning, we're winning by a lot. If we're losing, we're losing by a lot. And it happens really fast. Um, so I hope it doesn't get worse in A rank because it's pretty bad right now. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think hopefully that'll be something that'll, that'll get patched over time or that will balance itself out, I guess. Um, story mode. Yes. Here we go. Okay. Go for it. You seem to have, seem to be inked up for it. (laughs) So I am inked up. Inked. Uh, stay fresh. Uh, so, Splatoon 1, yet again, Old Man Geezer, likes the original, had by far the best story mode. I think Splatoon 2 was nothing more than a glorified, try each one of these weapons in these different areas. I thought it was trash. Absolute trash. Go on. What were we going to say? Did you play Octo Expansion? No. That's so it it kind of had the same vibes because it gave Wasn't you specific Octo expansion though the expansion of like, single player. It was yeah, but added on after the fact. Oh yeah, yes. I'm sorry, release a full game. No. <laughs> I'm saying I'm saying it was no, I think the I think Splatoon 2's story was the appropriate length compared to one and three. Well, I haven't played all the way three three, right. but Sure. I, I'm talking about content. I'm talking about quality. I, I know. I'm just saying that if you haven't played it, a lot of a lot of the things in Splatoon 3 story mode were derived from Octo Expansion. Okay. I'm just I'm just let it I'm just putting it out there. Putting it on your radar. I I wanted a quality story. This is I mean, you're barking up the wrong tree. I'm so sorry. Want, I'm sorry so I drag you, you into games with very watery stories. Monster well, Hunter, Splatoon. You do. I'm sorry. You can see where my priorities are at. Yeah. yeah, yeah can you know, online, we should have an episode. We should have an episode about mechanics. <laughs> Where's the story? Anyway, the this story mode. Story versus graphics. This story yeah. mode. Yeah. What did you think that, of this story mode? That that should be an episode. <laughs> it should be an episode. Ladies and gentlemen, let's Someday. talk about how there should be an episode. Listen, this is a review episode. <laughs> story mode. What do you think? How do you feel? I've only started. I haven't really gotten far, but I am happy so far. Same. I, Same. I, I want there to be more. I am hoping that there is some sort of absolutely epic, like, I want to go to an EDM concert, epic kind of boss. I think, I think we will. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. This has a lot yeah. of... To me, this I, has darker undertones. This is the the Splatoon story mode that seems to be taking itself the most serious, right? Yep. Because it's not like, oh, do this cute thing. It's like there is a thing ravaging the land and you have to have your weird pet eat its hairy pods to like. <laughs> it's there's so, it's definitely weird, but like, I don't know. I really like the overworld exploration. I like finding the nooks and crannies and secrets and things. I like yeah. that they took the elements from Octo Expansion where you have to pay money to do things and pay money to play a level or use different weapons. I wasn't a huge fan of the paying money thing, but I... I See, that you. that's from Octo Expansion. That's something that they took from Octo Expansion. So maybe it's better that you didn't That play That it. sounds like... Um, who, who was the developer who got sued for that? Who, like, you had to pay money in order to gain access to the other half? Yeah, but this is, this is fake money. This is squid <laughs> money. This isn't real money. It's not Same. made by EA. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think I think the best synopsis I can give for the story mode is if you have liked story modes in Splatoon in the past, you will like this story mode. I think if you if you like the story modes at all, this is probably the best story mode. I can't. I don't okay. particularly like the story modes. I play through them for the lols and the rewards. Um, I think. I think it's good mechanically. It has some fun ideas. I think the story is the story. Like, you know, just it's 
kind of flat, but it's Splatoon. So it's, Splatoon. it's not, you're not buying it for the story. You're not getting it for the story. Uh, if you I'm are, not, I'm real sorry. I, 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 I can tell you already, this is not going to be Splatoon one story. Like it just won't. You don't know. I, I don't feel it. I'm hoping that there is something epic, but I just don't feel it. But, I am excited because I think this is better than Splatoon 2. They also have said this is the last chapter in this story. So that doesn't necessarily mean it's the last Splatoon that's ever going to be made. But this is Splatoon 1 tied in Splatoon 2. Splatoon 2 ties into Splatoon 3. And this is going to put Which a cap. Is why I feel like this needs to be like EDM concert level. I think there will be. I think it will be. Maybe. We'll find out. We'll do release part two. The, the, you see, you don't have to worry about spoilers because we haven't played we into haven't the story played. mode far and enough to get spoilers. Truthfully, we kind of did that on purpose. Like, we don't want to spoil the story mode, especially for those who haven't. Like, you need to go play it yourself. Yeah, this is but... also, this is two weeks after the game's been out. This is a, sort of an early impressions. We may for do Splatoon 3 are, in a year. Yeah, for those of you who are listening to this in the audio-only version, like... Yeah, we will likely do like we did with Monster Hunter Rise, the review. the first the first you know couple weeks that it's out, and then as games do now, get tons and tons of content updates and balances and fixes, which I guess you know that's a whole separate episode. Um, but usually, most games look very different a year after their release, um, yes. so we will give the absolute grittiest of nittiest details um, in the review to come in the future um but yeah story mode it's good as far as story modes go in splatoon which is okay but relative to each other good the best one yet um yeah the card game so i know nothing about this other than what you have told me so go so ahead. it's it's only in a certain spot in the lobby or in the plaza and if you don't like go out of your way to find it you're never gonna interact with it um it, like you're gonna get card packs and you're gonna get like that moment of like oh can i unwrap it is it gonna be a holographic charizard and then in, like but then you never use it um mm -hmm. i've played a little bit of the card game i'm starting to get the hang of it it's not explained particularly well um, and right now you can only play against CPUs, to my knowledge. You can't play against other players, which is probably, like, the whole appeal. Um, but I think they're going to add that. But, yeah, as of right now, it's not, it's just not well incorporated. I'm sure when you really get into it, it's, like, a very fun strategy game. Um, but I would, I would wager the majority of people have not interacted it, with it and are going to listen to this review and be like, oh yeah, I forgot, there's a whole card game in this squid game. Um, so, that's the card game. Potential. It has potential, but it's hidden under a rock. I mean, um, it's all you can ask for is potential, right? Yeah. Well, no, I can ask for more than that. I want, like, <laughs> I want results. I want pictures of Spider-Man! Um, <laughs> uh, <coughs> um, the Splatfests. Um, so we did the demo Splatfest, which yep. we have a whole episode dedicated to that. Um, we have another Splatfest coming up this weekend. If you, if you were stranded, how many times have I asked this on this show? Oh my. If you were trapped on a desert island... And then I ask the question, but this Splatfest is, if you were trapped on a deserted island, would you prioritize bringing gear, bringing grub, yes. or bringing Maybe. fun? No. But we're, we're already committed to <laughs> Team Fun. What are you saying no for? <laughs> we already picked a team. <laughs> oh, the things I do for you. Arguably, the most practical thing is gear right but we're I mean, playing a game about squids in the future inking each other for turf i don't know that practicality and realism is necessarily is something i should concern myself in with. the universe you are a very practical person so i think it's it's like a mini personality quiz which one would you go for <laughs> um 
So team gear, the practical pick. Team food, the like um fun. Well, no, because there's an actual team fun. I don't know who picked team food. I don't know who picked team food. If you're if you're like very lighthearted and casual, you probably picked fun. If you take the big question very seriously, you probably picked gear. I don't know who picked food. Somebody. Um, Not us. But we're team fun. I, th- so yeah, Nick Yeti, fun. Nick Yeti is a survival expert. Okay, he knows what he's talking about. I've seen his gear closet. It's legit. He said the most important thing in any survival situation is a positive mental attitude. And how do you get a positive mental attitude? With board games and <laughs> cards, obviously. That's why they included in every, like, emergency survival pack is just, like, dice and, like, Yahtzee. Not Monopoly, I, because you will kill I, everyone that you're surviving with. I'm going to I'm going to admit this, but I have a bob, and in my bob is a harmonica, a small deck of cards, and See? some dice. So, If you're going to survive the apocalypse, you got to have something to do. If you're going to be stuck on a desert island, you can stay alive, but is that truly living? <laughs> now who's taking uh... the questions too seriously? <laughs> <laughs> is that truly living? Um... Uh, so yeah, so I think that, that about wraps it up. Um, biggest highlights are the movement, all the new content they've updated, but I think the look and feel of the game is what really makes it, like, a true, that's the highest point for me. Um, and then obviously the lowest point is them damn disconnects. Yep. Get it together, disconnects, I'm gonna sort of lump matchmaking right underneath there because that's sort of a network issue, although... The disconnect problems up here, matchmaking issue, I think, is going to level itself out. Um, yeah. What else? What's the side quest? I, I thought the side quest was <laughs> was gear, food, gear, food, or fun. fun. Yeah. Side the quest real of the, day. the real side quest is what is your favorite color ink? Mm. There's some good ones. Blue. Blue, I'm going purple. Yeah, it, I was it's say green it's tough. Or red. No, at or my purple. real favorite color, my real favorite color in this game is the the cyan, like the light blue. There's like oh. a there, there's like there's like a normal blue, like like your computer dyed blue screen of death blue. Yep. yep. And then there's like this like teal teal aqua cyan color blue. That is a little bit paler than it was in Splatoon 2. I paid a lot of attention to these colors. <laughs> it's a little bit paler than Splatoon 2, a little bit more green maybe, but it's just, uh, it feels like I'm on an island. I love it. Um, are, should we give this a score out of 10? I feel like we should. We're so inconsistent with our scoring. I, I was about to say, I don't even know what we've scored before. I think we I scored, like, oh no, we scored, we, we scored to, Sunbreak and Rise. We need to come up with a standardized Nintendo scoring system. It should be like five armchairs or something. How many controllers? Five, five How many controllers out of ten? <laughs> there. Out of 10? There. I created like Okay. Out of, five. out of five, I'm gonna multiply it by two in my head. That's fine. <laughs> I can do simple math. That's fine. If that makes you feel better. We can even do by letter because there's five letters, then I'll just turn them into numbers too. <laughs> what if it's three point five? Then what? Then that's a that's a seven. 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 Just... Look what you did. Okay, fine. Anyway, um, as a game or in comparison to the series? It, as a game, on its own. Because you can compare it... If you're comparing it to Splatoon 2, it's going it to get a hefty bonus. Yeah, it's a 10 out of 10 compared to Splatoon 2. Yeah. No what. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't have... I think the type of story that I want, because I play games for the, the, the story. Get out of here. Get out of here. But I have to say that I think it is a quality game on its own. So I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Oh, it, that was higher than I thought you were going to give it. I was going with 8. I really was going with 8. but like, I There's really like a bunch of decimal it. points. Feel free. I, I, I mean, 8.5, 8.2, like out of 10. Simply because 
I really enjoy playing it, and I will play this game purposely to play with my friends, and I really enjoy that camaraderie and communication. That yes. With so with that, I'm going to say, despite the fact that they don't have native voice chat, um, I, I, I am going to say that it, it ranks higher because of that. It does not have a compelling, heartbreaking story like The Last of Us. The heartbreaking or... story is the disconnects you meet along the way. <laughs> That's the that's the, what made me cry. There's no there's no deep romance. Um, How do you like, know? You haven't gotten through the story mode. Maybe you I, fall I, in love with the little fish guy. What was the uh, with the, the small fry? Game? No, the the game where you had to make love to your weapon. Oh, boyfriend dungeon. Yes, <laughs> I I'm not trying to say that boyfriend dungeon's a good game, but like the, there's no compelling story there. You know what I mean. Like so there is I, in Boyfriend Dungeon? Are you comparing <laughs> it to the story in Boyfriend Dungeon? You think Boyfriend Dungeon has the compelling story that tops it? <laughs> I think Boyfriend Dungeon has a compelling story, whereas Splatoon does not. Okay. I didn't say it was a quality compelling story. It's just, it's got a story. So I, I, I'm going to go with 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10, okay. David, thank you for liking the stream. Um. I don't know. I am really liking it so far. So far, I think it probably gets eight, eight and a half, eight point eight, eight point nine, because I gave I gave Monster Hunter nine. I think I gave Sunbreak nine out of ten, or Monster Hunter Rise nine out of ten. I, Ooh, it's just yeah, okay. it's just the limitations of what is currently on offer. There's 12 maps. There is no variations in weapon sets. The disconnects are out of control. Um, it's a very fun game. But I need... I, part of the appeal of the game is the content drip, right? It's that they're going to support it for two years. Yeah. It's they're going to add stuff. So... To me, it's feeling a little dry after two weeks because we haven't gotten the content drip yet. That's all, I mean... I mean, it's only been argument, two weeks. An argument can be made that you haven't dived deep enough into the story. You haven't done enough... Content, that's fair, you that's fair. Done, you know what I mean? So there's other things that are there for you to consume before this content is going to be released. Yeah, and I think that's... Like, I don't feel like I've done enough I don't think I feel like I've done, oh, I've done everything I want to do in the game and I'm just waiting because that's not the case. But yeah. I can see, I guess I can see where I would be like, because I don't really care that much about the story. I am getting too frustrated with Salmon Run based on the randomness. Like if there's a good weapon rotation and a good map, I can have a good time. But like, I don't, I just don't feel like it's worth the hassle. Um I really like the daily stuff I'm collecting. I really like trying out the new weapons. Like, I'm still working my way through the weapons. But, like, in a month, I'm going to be like, all right, I need to play on a new map. I need a new weapon. Like, and I see that already. So that's what's keeping it from a nine. After the first content, or they at least show us what's going on. Or it might I might just be completely opened up. After I get some sea snails and I can start making legit gear and then start playing Anarchy and stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'll say 8.9. And I think once we get that first content uh, drop, it's going to be the drop on top of the 8.9 that makes it a 9. Okay. All right. Yeah. Look at that. I made it through a whole episode without really making a food analogy. <laughs> I'm just waiting on the dessert. I'm waiting on the last course. I'm waiting on the garnish. There. I did it. No, I'm proud of you. So that is our re review of Splatoon 3. If you're listening to this or watching this live, thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Um, this is uh, broadcast slash recorded on September 21st. If you're around this weekend, we're going to be playing the Splatfest. So join Team Fun and we'll have some fun. See how that works? Join yep. Team Gear, and we'll have some gear. See, it doesn't work. No. No. Fun. It's all about the fun. I mean, you could make a food analogy and how it makes you happy. But... Oh, yeah. Hungry? Come fill up with Team Food. <laughs> oh, no! Your dad came in the stream right as I said the absolute cornball thing. Hi, well, of Bernie. Of course he did. Hi, Bernie. You've, hit, you've reached the end of the episode. 
you've reached the end of the episode, so wait for it to actually end and then yeah. rewatch it. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. We will catch you in the ink. In the ink!